I'm going to quickly show you the answers to the homework from last night. Okay. I know that number five was really hard, so if you didn't get the x-intercept, that's totally fine. And let's go ahead and get started. All right. I'm only going to do two examples today because I don't want to waste our time just creating graph after graph after graph. I want you guys to actually get practice finding the slope using the equation or using the formula. But I do want you to have something written in your notes to refer back to in case you forget what you're doing. Okay, so today's learning target is I can find the slope of a line given two points. Okay, so um, we're going to start, I'm going to leave the graph, so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be looking at graphs picking two points from those graphs, and then using the formula that I shared with you a few days ago to find the slope. So today, you'll still have the graph to look at. Tomorrow, when we do slope, we're just I'm just gonna be giving you two points, and you're gonna have to figure out the slope between those two points, okay? So let's get started. Um, I wanna make sure we remember, because it was a few days ago that we wrote down this formula, and we have not yet used it, I'm just going to throw it here at the top of your notes again. We know that m is the variable that we use to, uh, to represent slope. And remember that slope is your change in y over your change in x. So this is the formula. y2 minus y1 and x2 minus x1 on the bottom. Okay. So now that we have that fresh on the top of our notes, I'm going to show you how we use this, okay? Okay, so um, for you, to help you get this graph on your paper, I'll give you a few points. This point right here is negative 3, 5. This point right here is 0, 4. And this point right here is 3, 3. Okay, so I'll give you a second to get that on your paper. today we we just would just make our triangle we could already see that this is going to be a negative slope we would have done our change in y over our change in x which is basically what we are doing today but we're going to formalize the process here we're going to use the formula that I've given you so the first thing you want to do is pick any two points from your graph um, 
I'm gonna go ahead and choose this one and this one. So my points are negative three and five and three, three. Now we need to decide which one's gonna be our x1, y1, which one's gonna be our x2, y2. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick this one right here to be my x1. This one will be my y1. And then the second point will be my x2, y2. So all these numbers mean is it's just saying like, okay, this is gonna be my first point, this is my first point, my X for my first point and my Y for my first point. Yes, ma'am. Um, does it matter like, as long as it's like X or Y, does it matter which one you choose? No. You could, this could have been your X1, Y1, and this could have been your X2, Y2. You get the exact same answer. Okay. Yeah, Rhea. Um, does Y and X1 have to match each other? Yes, yeah. You can't have this one be X1 and Y2. Okay, this is has to be X1, Y1. That's the only thing that you need to be really careful about is your X1, Y1, that's the same point. X2, Y2 will be the same point, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and do um, the math on this. We're gonna be using this formula right here. So we have M is equal to, now our Y2 is three. And then we're gonna subtract our y1, which we is five, okay? Our x2 is three, and our x1 is negative three. So we're gonna subtract a negative three. We're finding the difference in the y and the difference in the x, so you're always subtracting, because that's how we find difference. Now, if I go ahead and simplify this, three minus five is negative two. Three minus a negative three is gonna be positive six. If I reduce this, it's gonna be negative one third. Check it out, there's your slope, okay? Now I don't want you to for completely forget about all the stuff we've learned about your little triangle because it's good to get the slope and say, does this make sense? And if we look back at the graph, you can see that it's going down. So yeah, it should be negative. And then if you wanted to, you can either do this mentally or just quickly sketch it out on your paper. You can do your little triangle and just make sure that you are correct. Okay, so you're go this went over six, down two. So this is negative two over six, which is what we got. And then it reduces down to negative one third. Yeah, yes, ma'am. I don't know if I missed this or not, but um, wouldn't that, wouldn't X1 be negative? Uh, wait, never mind. You good? It, yeah, X1 is negative. It's negative 3. What are you getting 3 minus 5? Where am I getting what? 3 minus 5. Oh, never mind. Got it? Elizabeth. What do you mean? Because like if you put it um, on the top uh, right on each one, well for what I see the top right, so how do you know which one to put it on? You mean how do you know where to graph your points? Mm -hmm. Like on this, on this, like you see how there's like a little box right there where you put the dot? Right, I made my little triangle here? No, like on the separate, on the graph paper, the separate little boxes. Okay, let me come and look at your page. Sorry, I did not understand. I'm glad I came and looked at your paper. Okay. Now let's go ahead and take a look at one. Rhea. Um, wouldn't it be different if, like, 3 and 3 were x1 and x2? 
well, why don't we try it out and see? Okay, so if we, if we reversed this, and this was x2, x, y2, x1, y1, then this would be the opposite. So you would have m is equal to 5 minus 3 instead, so 5 minus 3, and then negative 3 minus 3. So let's solve it and see. So 5 minus 3 is 2. Negative 3 minus 3 is negative 6. Negative 2 6 reduces to negative 1 third. Okay. So it truly, truly, truly does not matter um, which, which order you go in. You just have to be consistent. Like if this x is first, then that y has to be first. So if, if this is the point that you're choosing to be first, then it needs, or be your, this point, it needs to line up with each other in that, if that makes sense. Okay, let's do one more example, and then we're gonna get some practice as a class. So I'm gonna draw this line and then I'll tell you what points there are here. Okay. So this point right here is negative two, negative four. This point is zero, negative one. And this point right here is 2, 2. I'll give you a second to get that down and then we'll use our formula. You think this is easier? Yeah. Everyone has a different opinions about it. It also really helps too if you pl always plug it in correctly and solve it correctly. You don't have to worry about trying to remember which slope is negative and which slope is positive. It, it helps. All right, so I'm gonna just go ahead and pull two points off of this. Um, I'm gonna use the point zero, negative one, and I'll use the point two, two. If you use different points than me, you will still get the same answer. So x1, y1, x2, y2. Okay. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna subtract my y's on the top so 2 minus a negative 1. And then I subtract my x's on the bottom. So 2 minus 0. And 2 minus a negative 1 is 3. 2 minus 0 is 2. There is my slope. Yes, ma'am? Why is it uh, 2 minus negative 1? But you have to subtract them. Oh, you 
Oh. Yeah, because we're finding a difference. You have to subtract them. So it has to be 2 minus this whole thing, negative 1. No, your questions are so good. And it really, when you ask a question, it helps you so much to understand, which is what I want. Rhea. You got it? Okay. Any questions about this one? And check it out. If you, um, if you do your little triangle here, you're going to get the same thing. You can see that it's positive, which is this is, and you, it's going up by three over by two, so three halves. And you don't want to turn these into a mixed number. You want them to leave, be left as improper fractions. You also don't want to turn it into a decimal because it will make it harder to understand that um, slope. Okay, so what we're going to do now is um, I want, I don't want you to spend all your time drawing out your graphs. So I'm going to show you, we're going to actually start your practice together. I'm going to project the problems up on the screen. I want you guys to take out your whiteboard and then everyone's going to do, use the formula, get your slope. And then when I tell you, everyone will show them so that I can see that everyone understands. Okay. So does anybody need a whiteboard? Yeah. yeah. on the TV, I suppose. 